is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello. <laughs> Sid Roth here. Welcome, welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. My guest, I, I have traced this, and it's amazing. My guest is responsible for praying for someone that brought the move of the Holy Spirit for the three greatest revivals in modern day history. And then the fire spread to another church in England and brought the fire to England. That's his job. That's his job description. He is a fire starter. And I believe, I believe that we are about ready to have a fire jump from him right on you. And it's nice that he's a fire starter, but he wants you to be a fire starter. Now, my guest, Rodney Howard Brown. Uh, Rodney, I think it's such a wonderful heritage you have. I mean, at uh, five, you're born again. At eight, you're filled with the Holy Spirit. Tell me, when you were a young boy, you went, came home one day, and you saw your mother laughing in the Spirit. Tell me what you, what you observed. Oh, thank you. Well, I walked in the living room, and Mom was sitting there oh, and just you, beside herself. Uh, laughing uncontrollably. And I said to my father, I said to my dad, I said, what's happening to mom? He said, Jesus is touching her. Now, what people don't know was that my mom had uh, fallen and broken her arm in three different places. Um, very bad break. And God had miraculously healed her. And it was actually that afternoon that she was being healed. Well, she ended up cutting the cast off of her arm after four days, totally healed. But it was, she was being touched by the power of God in her home. And I saw that as a, as a young boy. What a heritage to have. I mean, I wasn't even sure there was a God when I was a young boy. I mean, you, are, you are so blessed, Rodney. But then tragedy hit your home in uh, 1978. Your older brother, who you respected, you looked up to, um, he developed leukemia. What happened? Well, he died suddenly. It was chemically induced from where he was, a uh, place he was working at. And, uh, but God had called him to the ministry. He was 14 years older than I was. And so suddenly he dies from this leukemia, which really affected the whole family. You can understand. I mean, we never expected him to die. But I remember standing at his uh, deathbed. I was only 17 at the time. And I was really angry. You know, I was not mad at God. I was mad at the devil. And I remember saying this at that moment. I said, devil, you, you'll rue the day that you touch my family. And I didn't even know what I was saying. I said, people are going to laugh at you around the world. <laughs> now, now well, let me explain something to those that have never seen Rodney Minister. He is known for an anointing that causes people to laugh. And I have to tell you the funniest story I know about Rodney. Uh, I had an uncle that was a professional comedian, Jewish, like myself. Uh, he was a non-believer. And I decided, what would a professional comedian think of seeing Rodney speak and people laughing uncontrollably? What, would that be an interesting experiment? So I sent it to Uncle Jay. He watches it. He calls me on the phone, Sid, angry. This is not funny. Why are people Cursing. This guy he said, said that man is not funny. And, and I don't He's getting more laughs than I'm getting. 
<laughs> you know, it's so funny. It sounds like I'm making it up, but I'm not. I mean, he, uh, there's a prof he couldn't understand it. Uh, so, Rodney, when your brother died, you got angry at the devil, and you got more serious at, at pursuing God than you've ever been in your life. What happened the next year? Well, from August of 78 till July of 79 was just a time of, of great hunger and pressing into God. You know, I knew God had called me into the ministry, and I knew that if I was going to go into ministry, I had to have the fire of God. And in Luke chapter 3, verse 16, John even said, I baptize with water, but there's coming one after me who will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. So I knew about the Holy Ghost, but I wanted this and fire. And so that's what I was crying out for, even though I was already baptized in the Holy Spirit, already uh, spoke with other tongues, already had had several of the gifts of the Spirit in operation. I wanted the and fire because I met a lot of people that were in the ministry. They spoke in tongues, but I didn't see the and fire part. It's like the prophet of old said, it's like a fire shut up in my bones. So for me, it came to a crossroads in July of 1979 in a prayer meeting with about, uh, about 18 people present, young people, most of them all Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, Dutch Reformed. I'm the only Pentecostal. <laughs> and I was crying out and I said, Lord, I want your fire. And I was shouting at the top of my voice. And I did this for about 20 minutes. And I actually, my voice started going. I mean, when you shout, when you, somebody said, we well, don't have to shout, God's not deaf. But he's not deaf, but he's not nervous either. <laughs> I was desperate. When, when you are desperate, you cry out. And I was crying out, Lord, I said, either you come down and touch me or I'm coming up there to touch you. And uh, I was, I meant it. I, I, I've got to have your touch. And then it was like suddenly somebody poured like, like was warm oil or honey or however you want to describe it, or I sometimes say like gasoline and then took a match and, I mean, just set me on fire from the top of my head to my feet. It was like electricity was running through me, but it wasn't, if you've had pins and needles, it's like that, but not pins and needles, because pins and needles were very uncomfortable. This was, this was glorious. And but out of my... You described it like honey, that sounds. Yeah, yeah, but it was, it was like a river was flowing out of me. I was laughing, I was crying, and I was speaking other tongues all at the same time. And I was beside myself. Now, <laughs> wait till you find out what happened to these evangelicals that think he's a little thistle and sugar. That's Hebrew for a little crazy. <laughs> what, guess what happens to these young kids? We'll be right back. <laughs> Right back to It's Supernatural. My passion is for you to walk in divine health 24-7. That's why I handpicked my favorite healing scriptures from many translations of the Bible, personalized them for you, and made them available in this free ebook. I want you to meditate or pray out loud these scriptures over your life daily and witness the supernatural healing power of God's kingdom come upon you. Download your free Healing Scriptures ebook now. We now return to It's Supernatural. So, in 1979, Rodney is desperate. He's a broken man. His brother, who he loved, dies from leukemia suddenly. He's crying out to God for all, I mean, he didn't care who was around or anything. There were people that did not understand being filled with the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit. Well, Rodney had had all of that, but he knew there was something more. There was something greater. The Bible refers to it as the fire of God. He cries out and the fire comes upon him. How long did this fire stay on you? Well, when the fire come on me, uh, I, I didn't know what to do. I realized why we're going to have to have a glorified body when we get to heaven. Because if we don't, we're gonna, they're going to have to carry us everywhere. <laughs> but the day will come when this corruptible will put on incorruptible, this mortality put on immortality will be changed in the twinkling of an eye. But the presence of God was so overwhelming. So 
all of the people around me, I just started laying hands on them because I thought the only way I can get rid of this is to give it away. But it didn't It didn't lift off of me. It got on them and the fire got hit. All of them, they were filled with the spirit of people falling under the power. And uh, So what, what happened to these people that didn't know diddly about the power of God, these young kids? What happened? Well, there was a bunch of girls from a high school for girls out of the town of Grahamstown. And it was an Anglican uh, school. And, of course, they all got hit by the power. One of the ladies now, because she's married to a pastor friend of mine, and years later we were talking, and I sp spoke about the night the fire came on me. She said, you were the guy. She said, do you know what happened? She said, a revival broke out in that school that went for three years. And many people were called into the ministry, because that's what happens when the fire of God comes on people. But Rodney, get ready. It's coming again. And I believe that fire is going to start right now. I believe that fire is going to start with you. So Rodney, as a, uh, being raised in South Africa, had something from God. He knew he had to come to America. You told me you used to line up your teddy bears. Tell me about that. Yeah, I used to line up my bears. Well, I was only five. My, my little brother was three. I'd line up my bears and I'd preach to them. And then I would... <laughs> I would hand the service over to my little brother, climb out the window to go to America, to go preach. <laughs> and so, then I would come back 10 minutes later to tell my brother and the bears all the great things the Lord had done. But I mean, I lay hands on the bears, all the bears <laughs> fell under the power. And what's so interesting is that we don't have bears in Southern Africa. America's the land of the bear. So it's like the Lord was getting me ready. Okay, for. so he comes to America uh, and that's a story in itself. But then in 1989, he goes to Clifton Park, upstate New York. What happened? All right, I get invited to do a week-long meeting in Clifton Park. The pastor said to me, what are you going to teach on in the morning time? I said, I felt led to teach on the subject of the anointing, how the Lord touched me. And so on the Monday morning, the church ran about 250 people. So, you know, the Sunday morning, it looks great. Monday morning, about 60 people showed up, which doesn't sound like a lot, but that's, we never ever had a Monday morning meeting before. Tuesday morning, about 100 people came, and I told my wife, I said, something's happening. There's a hunger that's taking place. But right in the middle of the service, as I was sharing out of the book of Luke, chapter 4, Verse 14, Jesus returned the spirit and the power in, in the Galilee. Went, they went out of fame of him through all the region round about, and he taught in synagogues. And then verse 18, where he said, The spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, send me to heal the brokenhearted, preach deliverance to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable gift of the Lord. As I was sharing that, suddenly it was like the very atmosphere of the room changed. The air party yeah. became. The only way I can describe it became holy. And I could feel the air moving in front of me. And while I'm talking, the power of God started hitting people just in the congregation. It was like an unseen hand, and people just started falling out of their seats. And some were weeping, some were filled with great joy, others shaking under power. And, and of course, the noise is getting louder, and I'm having to speak above the noise of the people. And that, that's what happened in April of 89, and it has continued unto this you day. You told me that you never had sad happen. People are usually respectful when, when someone is teaching or preaching. Uh, and what did you tell God? Well, I, I mean, I'd seen it happen after you finished preaching and every head bowed, every right. eye closed. But I said to the Lord, Lord, you're ruining my meeting. <laughs> and, uh, but I've been crying for God to come and move. If you remember, 87, 88 were terrible years in America. Major ministries had collapsed. There was right. an apathy within the church, and we'd been crying out for revival. So the Lord said, oh, well, I'm moving. You asked me to come and move. And he said, let me touch my people. He said, if you're ashamed of what I'm doing here, I'll take it away from you and give it to another. Because I understood that there would come persecution and criticism because people don't understand the ways of the Spirit of God. But I said, Lord, don't take it away. Just come. Let your fire fall. And whatever happens, happens. People are going to say what they want to say. But thank God for the power of the Holy Spirit. And we will never compromise the anointing of the power of the Holy Spirit not to be accepted anywhere, not for money, not for fame, not for fortune. We will never compromise the touch of God. And you know what? Many of you are so empty, you've, you, you don't even feel anymore. That is not normal. 
That is not, in other words, you're so used to religious Christianity that you don't know what normal is if, if it just rears up in your face. But I'm going to tell you something. Many of you, for the first time in your life, are going to be normal because I'm going to, when we come back, I'm going to ask Rodney to teach you how to be normal. Normal as defined by the Bible. Be right back. <laughs> We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Rodney Howard Brown was the catalyst for three of the most powerful revivals in North American history. The Toronto Blessing, the Brownsville Revival, and the Smithton Outpouring. Wherever he goes, the fire of God literally jumps from him right into those who hear his teaching. Now he wants to empower you to experience revival in your life. Call now and get Rodney Howard Brown's anointed course, The Touch of God, a practical series on the anointing, which includes his book and his four-part audio CD teaching. Yours for a donation of $40. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9220. Through this anointed course, you will learn how to enter the secret place of communion with your Heavenly Father. Understand how to press in and touch the hem of His garment, accessing miracles like never before. Receive an impartation from God to equip you with abundance of favor, supernatural gifts, and power. Understand how to cooperate with the Spirit of God and allow His anointing to flow forth from you to touch others. Don't miss out on getting Rodney Howard Brown's anointed course, The Touch of God, a practical series on the anointing, which includes his book and his four-part audio CD teaching. Yours for a donation of $40. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9220. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth, It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9220 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Now, I'm here with Rodney Howard Brown, and you look at him you find out about people with cancer that are healed, people that have spent a lifetime in a wheelchair that get up and start walking. Uh, you, you hear that he hears God so clearly. Uh, you, and you say, what a wonderful gift God has given Rodney. Rodney, really and truly, can everyone that gets hungry for God walk in the same presence of God that you are walking in? Yes, sir. It's available to every single person. It's like salvation. It's available to all. All don't receive it for whatever reason, but it's available to every single person. Healing, God's healing power is available to every person. His power to anoint and, and grace and equip is available to every single individual. You have to get hungry. In John chapter 4, Jesus talked about a well of water springing up to everlasting life. And in John 7, he talked about a river. Out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. In John chapter 14, 15, and 16, he talked to the disciples about the fact that he would go away. And he said, I'm not going to leave you without a comforter. I'm going to send another comforter, the spirit of truth. He's with you now, but he's going to be in you. And so you see that taking place even after the resurrection when he told the disciples, go and tarry at Jerusalem. And they could have said, but Lord, we already have had miracles. We've walked with you for three and a half years of your earthly ministry. We've seen the signs and wonders. We've cast out devils. But remember, he said the Holy Spirit's with you, but now he's going to be in you. And so he told them to go and tarry at Jerusalem so they could be endued with power. Now, this promise was not just for the apostles. This is where many in the church have got it wrong. People say, well, that ceased when the last apostle died. That's bogus. There's not even a scripture to verify that. The fact of the matter is that God is still pouring out His Spirit on the earth today because the first Pentecost is still in effect. We don't need another Pentecost. We don't need another Pentecost. The Holy Spirit is still in the earth. He's still moving. God has been moving for 2,000 years. The wind has been blowing. The fire has been falling. To all those that are hungry, no matter where you live in the earth, you might be in a remote mountain someplace and you cry out to God, He will come, He will touch you, He will visit you. If God could come and touch me in Africa in 1979, then He could touch you. You've got to cry out. You've got to be hungry. But God knows 
that our people are hungry. Why do, why do they have to cry out? He knows they want to be filled. Why is this cry out important? If I told you, go do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, you would go do that, all those things, and never get any closer. But it's about an intimate, personal relationship with Jesus, where you come into that daily communion with Him, and in Him you live and move and have your being. This is not about another church service. It's about the church service coming in on the inside of you, and His name is Jesus. It's about a person, and you live in communion with Him. And it's through all the tests and the trials of life that he's still there with you. His presence is with you. His joy is with you. Uh, his peace is with you. <laughs> why, why is it that so many people in the church are, are depressed and, they, and they're sad and they, they're discouraged and they're downhearted, yet the greater one comes to live on the inside of them? It's about us coming to the place where we heal to him and we allow him to come and do whatever he wants to do in us. And you can, let me tell you, you can be married, you can have children, you can work a job, you can be all of those things in the world out there and still have the anointing. You don't have to be a recluse living somewhere in a monastery or whatever. You can be a normal, everyday person living the supernatural life where the supernatural is natural. And it's naturally super. Uh, Rodney? <laughs> I like that. Can I, can I steal it? <laughs> it's yours. <laughs> okay. Now, are you ready at home to receive? I, I want Rodney to pray for you for an impartation. And I'm going to tell you something. I have seen this through this because I've been with, on radio for many years. The, the anointing to receive, that's up to you. But the one praying, you will receive it right through this television right now. You in the studio audience, you're going to receive this right now. But you be hungry, you be desperate, and you don't look for anything. Don't look for falling. Don't look for crying. Don't look for laughing. Look for Jesus. Would you pray? Yes, sir. Right now, the first thing is to say, Jesus, be my Lord and my Savior. Invite him into your heart because that's the way it starts right there. There's not about an experience. Many people in the New Age, they go look for experiences about a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. We say, Jesus, come and be my Lord and my Savior. And then when you do that, then you say, now, Lord, you are the baptized in the Holy Spirit, which he is. John the Baptist said, I baptize with water, but there's coming one after me who will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire, talking of Jesus. Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost and fire. So right now, just where you are, just lift your hands, and I'm going to pray, and the power of God's going to come upon you. Father, in the name that's above every name, the name of Jesus, I thank you for your anointing and your power, just like on the day of Pentecost, to come upon each and every person crying out to you right now, that the fire of God fall in the name of Jesus from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Fill them. Fill them, Lord. Fill them to overflowing. Let your river begin to flow. Let the wind of heaven blow. Let the fire of God fall. Let fresh oil be poured out. Let new wine be poured upon your people even now. Anoint their heads with oil. Fill their cups to overflowing. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for it right now. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, just lift your hands right where you are and just begin to thank him right now. Just begin to praise him right now. Just begin to let the river of God just begin to flow out of you. Some of you, God's filling you now with that heavenly language. Just begin to speak it out right now. Others, the Lord's filling you with His joy. Just let that joy just begin to bubble right out of your belly. Let Him touch you. He wants to touch you so He can touch through you. That's what the touch of God is all about. It's not to keep it to ourselves. It's to take it to a lost and dying world so that the whole world can see that Jesus is real, that He's alive that he's risen, and that he's coming soon. You will be witnesses unto him. Let him touch you right now. Let him fill you right now to overflowing. Father, we just thank you for your presence, for your anointing. La presencia de Dios, your presence, your presence, your presence. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Now, you must seek God for all of your worth when we go off the air. 
You must seek God all, all times. There is no one else. There is nothing else except your int you were created to have intimacy with God. It's not an accident you're watching this show right now. God is calling you by name, by your name now. The three greatest North American revivals of our time occurred in Toronto with over four and a half million attending. In Pensacola, Florida, with another four million attending. And in Smithton, Missouri, as hundreds of thousands invaded a small country church in a town with a population of only 532 people. Hundreds of thousands were saved, healed, and delivered by the awesome power and presence of the Holy Spirit in these three places of outpouring. Rodney Howard Brown is a fire starter. He was the catalyst for each of these three powerful revivals. Wherever he is, the fire of God literally jumps from him right into those who hear his teaching. Now, he wants to empower you to experience revival in your life. Call now and get Rodney Howard Brown's anointed course, The Touch of God, a practical series on the anointing, which includes his book and his four-part audio CD teaching. Yours for a donation of $40. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9220. Rodney Howard Brown has mentored hundreds of thousands around the world to operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I heard the Lord say, the great men and women that I'm using in the earth today, I'm not using them because they're anything special. I'm using them for one reason and one reason alone, that they touch me and I touch them. Hence the title, The Touch of God. It's all about God coming and touching you. The touch of God for the believer is the most important thing that we can have. Through this anointed course, you will learn how to enter the secret place of union and communion with your Heavenly Father. Understand how to press in and touch the hem of His garment, accessing miracles like never before. Receive an impartation from God to equip and bless you with abundance of favor, supernatural gifts, and power. Understand how to cooperate with the Spirit of God and allow His anointing to flow forth from you to touch others. This is Rodney Howard Brown's destiny to equip you to be so filled with the fire of God when he prays that prayer of impartation over you. I believe if you have done what he tells you to do, you will receive the same fire that he received, the same fire that those first believers received at Pentecost. You know why? because Jesus is coming back soon. Don't miss out on getting Rodney Howard Brown's anointed course, The Touch of God, a practical series on the anointing, which includes his book and his four-part audio CD teaching. Yours for a donation of $40. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9220. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9220 or log on to Sid Roth. Roth.org. Call or write today. Next week on It's Supernatural, my guest is going to teach you the missing message of Jesus. And that is, Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted. And it's my conviction in a broken world, with a broken devil, with broken people. How do you expect to have a healed heart unless Jesus heals your heart?